Hello everyone and welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy Heroes video and to my first ever collab. As you may have seen on the screen, I do have Song Jita joining me today. So obviously, thank you very much for joining me. Hey guys, uh, thanks for having me on, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, obviously, most of you guys will already know that Song Jita is probably, I'd say, like the free-to-play king of Rand Arena, I'd say. Um, <laughs> being in the, consistently uh, in the top 300, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, around there. I I peaked at like rank 60 something uh, and then got shot way back down. But I, I averaged in like 200, 300, 400 and then sometimes stretch into that 100 something. But yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, so in today's video, we're going to kind of briefly talk over the meta forecast for the next 3v3 season. Um, kind of go over the new Datacron set and how that might play into some of the teams that you may set on defense and see on offense. Um, so kind of go around that, I think, would be the idea. So I guess if we just start off with what are your first initial impressions of this new uh, Datacron set, I, su I suppose? It's really like a glass cannon set as far as stats go. I'm not a huge fan of it because uh, because one, I don't like mono alignment sets and it's all light side. And also there's, there's four actions, which I think is very crowded. I don't think we've had that before. Yeah. Um, there's a few good abilities in there that you might want to try to re-roll for, um, but with data cache, it's going to be much more plentiful this season. I think people can just go for like a pure offensive data crumb when they get to a level nine. Just try to re-roll all stats for either offense, crit damage, or an armor pen. Probably armor pen being the best, and yeah. then just go for glass cannons. Uh, but overall, set set nine is just way better than set ten. Yeah, I think the meta is going to stay with set nine, obviously, until that expires and we get the new set. But mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a case of, like you mentioned, with glass cannon. And I don't know about how you're feeling about this Datacron set in terms of actual farming, but I definitely feel like I'm probably going to have a lot more level nines uh, than I probably did for the previous set, just because obviously we don't have to waste any uh, th that energy on the Conquest Sector 1 node, obviously for data cache, yeah. like you mentioned. So you're going to be oh able to farm gosh, a lot yeah, more mats. <laughs> yeah good riddance to that like i hated farming that node it's like i felt like two-thirds of the time i get fifty thousand, and it was such a poor return but it was like that was the only choice you had like i'd even begrudgingly spend 200 crystals on a million data cache or uh when that would reset and now i can get a million or 1.25 million every day or like every six hours for 625 charge yeah. up currency it's ridiculous so it's, it's gonna be so many level nines so I guess I just wanted to uh, kind of go through some of the teams and how they might be impactful, obviously, on the next season of 3v3. And obviously, I know mm -hmm. um, from watching your video on the Datacron set that you weren't a big fan of the Qui-Gon Jinn uh, Datacron. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's like, I don't know, who cares what, how much damage he does? He's not there to do damage. Like, his damage yeah, multipliers on his moves are so bad. He's just there for the leadership and to to juice up Kieti Moody and Anakin and then die and juice them up even more. Um, I mean, maybe there'll be a team now that you don't even have to have him die. I mean, there's plenty of instances where it's like that already, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the ceiling for Anakin's damage output. It's going to be literally insane this season with all the armor penetration. Yeah, because I, I kind of saw like Qui Gon Jinn's when I first looked at the concert. I kind of saw Qui Gon Jinn's as kind of like a um, an offense glass cannon, like you just take it. It would be an offense team, Kargon mm -hmm. Jin on defense, regardless of his Datacron. If you're faster with like Bad Batch, Bad Batch is still going to absolutely demolish it. Um, yeah. There's kind of one of those things where he's going to be obviously hitting hard, hopefully, if he can survive for long enough. <laughs> yeah. And I guess, I mean, since they made the level nines only require R5, I'm not going to like not use it if I roll the Qui Gon, um, but it would just have to line up with the right stats. But I don't. I don't know. I don't see his damage being impactful to anything. Yeah, I think I I definitely uh, agree that this was going to be um, more offense things, and he's going to be quite an impactful character that way. But I definitely agree with mm -hmm. what you were saying about Ayla Datacron. Um, I think that's going to be a pretty huge Datacron for Adme Gideon teams. Um, as kind of what I've yeah. set her with because she is a support character, so she she benefits from the uh, protection up from Moth, which I think would be quite good. Yeah, so let me hold on. I'm pulling that up. I want to read the Ayla one once more. Whenever another ally, yeah, so it's not restricted at all to like any kind of faction or anything. So, yeah, that definitely opens up with Moth. I hadn't thought about that either. I was just thinking like 
Um, yeah, so you can, get an, teams. you can get an opening stun with his uh, protection up ability, basically, if you can obviously land that. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, what if she crits? Um, or no, her basic, she has 35% chance to call an ally to assist. So yeah, you could get like a mass swarm just on yeah. uh, that Moff Gideon ability. Yeah, you could definitely, definitely get like a Moff Swarm into a uh, Ayla basic for a stun and then Padme for some more protection up potentially. So that yeah. could boost up your courage stacks. Um, the only thing that's obviously quite bad about Ayla is that she has a double check um, for her stun. So she has yeah. the crit chance uh, check and then obviously the potency check as well. So maybe crit right. chance on her deck might not be a bad thing if you're struggling with, in terms of um, like mods Real. for crit chance and things. So. Yeah, that's something to think about. Uh, usually crit chance is like, eh, don't yeah. really care for it, but... <laughs> is she... Okay, yeah, she does physical... Yeah, her base at R5. I'm on .gg now. It's 65%, so yeah, you just need a little bit extra. Uh, even if you didn't have great mods. Well, you already got her yeah. at 100%, but yeah, even if you didn't have a good crit chance mods on her, then yeah, just a little bit of crit chance on the data crop yeah. can get you over that check. And obviously the good thing about the set nine Deacon is that we have obviously um, no tenacity check, uh, no extra tenacity from mm -hmm. the Deacon, so we don't have to worry about that in yeah. terms of that stopping the stun. Yeah, yeah and then obviously Cal, um, you don't have Cal either, do you? You have a beautiful Cal, yeah. Just like, He looks just like mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, I think Cal is probably going to be um, offense powerhouse again. With like a Jedi Knight mm. uh, Luke lead or something like that. I don't know whether he's. I think it's kind of a waste with uh, Jedi Master Luke. I don't know if you probably agree with that, but yeah, I mean Jedi Master Luke can get enough done on his own. Uh, there, there might be instances where you need Cal with Luke, a uh, Jedi Master Luke. Like I don't think, like Jedi Master Luke versus Malgus is not safe at all, just because you have Jedi Master Luke. I've lost that and with set nine, that's going to be impossible. And so if you like needed him to get past. Uh, I don't know, another Galactic Legend or Malgus, you'd probably need Cal with Jedi Master Luke. Yeah, probably. Um, I mean, you could beat certain JMK lineups with just normal JML, but yeah, I think Luke, or Jedi Knight Luke and Cal might be able to handle Malgus fine anyway. So yeah, that, that'll be a good combo. Yeah, I'm kind of intrigued to see whether, like mentioned with like JML, whether JML might be able to counter some more Galactic Legends. Um, because I know like JML's kind of fallen out of mm -hmm. favor against Ray and stuff, whether Cal will make a big difference with him being able to get his execute off uh, a bit earlier to kill like Ben and stuff if he's in the right threshold. Yeah, JML has, has uh, seen better days. Sometimes <laughs> I just use him as like an easy gas counter and I'm yeah. like, eh. Kind of throw some like uh, leftover Jedi with him and use a protection cron. <laughs> you kind of good to go basically. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or we might still see him with a Bastila lead. People mod him for high health and like Bastila and Watt. But the problem with that to me is, is uh, not that it's not a good team. It's just like Watt is still really valuable in threes. So yeah, and you've got the Bastila mm -hmm. Cron to consider as well from set nine. So yeah, um, I suppose we're gonna use that. I suppose if you want to use Bastila Cron, you can't really use that team. You've got to be using the Night Luke or the Night Revan, basically. True. Yeah. Uh, so I think what. It uh, the Wookiee Datacrons are going to be probably the best mm -hmm. in terms of for this set. Yeah. Um, this Dalbar Vandal team, I know it looks kind of defensive, but obviously their whole damage is based on defense. And it's kind of just like my idea with this three's team is you get just stuck behind Zalbar because he's going to keep um, taunting and then Vandal will just revive him if he dies off. I know Vandal will yeah. get some taunt as well, but it could be quite annoying. So... With so I think Wookiees under Tarful are still like better on offense, even though it might be counterintuitive because like they're all about the defense stat. I think you want to pick and choose who you attack with them because on defense, they are pretty vulnerable to Bad Batch. Because um, even if they have like the Grit Datacron, Bad Batch still does true damage, which gets by all that defense and yeah. like right, any, any of that extra survivability there. Um, Padme, like, is going to have a harder time. If they do choose the Grit data cron, it's like if they have Grit, you use Bad Batch. If they have the 75% damage reduction or extra defense, you could probably still do Gidme. Um, but it's like you can you can get around it with a relatively cheap team. So I think on offense, we need to figure out what the best use for them is. Or not we. We don't have him finished yet. <laughs> yeah. But, like, people. Yeah, I think... Uh... 
It's like there's gonna be some like survival. Like hope the AI is stupid and just goes for Zalbar constantly, and you just like mm -hmm. nuke the team with Zalbar. Obviously, you hope that Vandal doesn't right. get killed off before, or it's just gonna be some mixture of. I, th I definitely feel like Zalbar is gonna be pretty important to the um, our yeah. team, regardless of the comp. It's just gonna be that third slot that's gonna be uh, depending on who you want to choose there. Yeah, it might even get me to relic up Zalbar once I finish Tarful. Who knows? <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be... It's one of the annoying things about the new day concept. It's obviously a lot of us that don't um, see wail out on the new characters. We have to wait a while for us to actually use the yeah. Datacrons <laughs> to their full effect. Yeah, it's like, I want to use it. <laughs> yeah, I want to use it. I just can't get there. Yeah, it's like, That's it looks enough. so good, but I can't use it. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it is going to be nice with just like CLS because um, I think either the stun one or the bonus turn from Wookie Kills combined with a lot of armor pen, it's going to be really nice for CLS. Yeah. And I already, I already rolled one that I haven't done any rerolls on yet, and it's like almost perfect. I have that bonus turn level six, and I have over two hundred percent armor penetration. Oh wow! So okay. that's going on. Uh, yeah, that's going with CLS and fives, and then one of the Wookie teams. You can even 3v3. Have, you can even have a um, that the the damage reduction one would be pretty good on the the Wookies as well, because obviously targeting Chewie to get Chewie out, or if you want to put CLS on defense, for example. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. You stop chew, yeah, that one's really early. strong too. Yeah. Okay, so the next one obviously would be Captain Rex, and I've kind of put two teams. Um, the the Phoenix one, I have no idea what three's comp is actually going to work. Uh, that's kind of really dependent on whether you have his Omicron or not, because obviously his Omicron states that it has to be uh, with clones in three v three. Um, yeah. So that, that's why I've put Cody and Sergeant in there because I just thought that all the other clones are just going to be taken up um, for, from the other ones. So I don't really know how much of an impact. Captain Rex is going to be this three season with his uh, day Chrono. I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think in 3v3, th 3v3 Cody and Sarge are just, I don't know, they're so bad. That I don't, it's hard for me to think Rex can fix them. Yeah. Um, I haven't been exposed to too much because I haven't really watched it, him used in 3v3 all that much, but whoever Ally is this, if, uh, I'm sorry. Can you sorry. pull it back up? Yeah. Yeah, armor strip. Yeah. I mean, it it might be decent. I I wouldn't see myself like trying to use it. Honestly, it's all about five v five with Phoenix for him. Yeah, and he gets a bit of extra speed just for himself that he doesn't share with anyone else. Mm -hmm. Um, just with in any of the grand arenas. But I think it's going to be because I think the obviously the the weird thing that we have with this day concert is that we have the the chances to roll different characters obviously depending on what you get so like you can get rex on both the clones and the phoenix one then you can get ezra on yeah. the jedi and the phoenix i just think it makes it a bit more difficult because obviously with threes and fives with rex's split i suppose with the fact that you can farm it quicker rex getting rex a rex cron for clones and a direct cron for phoenix probably won't be that bad to achieve if you can obviously get lucky with a phoenix roll having to roll between eight characters or whatever it is <laughs> yeah yeah like the tricky part is like for that i think you gotta re you gotta roll up to nine before you try to do any rerolls on level six or anything yeah that's uh, why i do it, as well like yeah. with so many f yeah with so many factions it's like 20 or something possibilities on the level six if you like have a phoenix day current you're like oh i don't want this phoenix ability i want another one if you reroll it chances are you're just gonna get a clone or wookie or something so if you want to lock in like a phoenix or a clone you go all the way to level nine um then re-roll for either the character you want or the faction uh bonus you want to reduce your odds to make it like one out of five instead of one out of 20 you're shooting at yeah especially with uh if your guild for example maybe isn't as uh territory rewards competitive like my uh, my guild for example is mm -hmm. not the most territory reward competitive so if you lose a round you're only going to get 20 uh, is it 20 reroll mats for coming second place? Like 380 and above? I'm pretty sure it is. It's like yeah, it's like 20 or 25 or something. You can you could do one like fresh reroll on a level nine thing. Yeah. Um, it, so yeah, like with those level three rerolls so scarce, it's always best to not reroll anything until you get to level nine. Um, if you really have a specific level nine in mind. Yeah, because I think it's like tripled for um, first place rewards, isn't it? You get 60 or something. Yeah, you get like 60. Yeah, so it definitely is obviously worthwhile. That's what I do. And you mentioned it as well that you just roll all the way up to level nine and then you just do whatever. Uh, as long as you've obviously got the alignment mm -hmm. that you want, uh, you then just go up to level nine and do, hopefully get a 20 reroll for the character that you need <laughs> if you get lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
and then just like pick pick one that already has some pretty strong stats to take the level nine. That's that's pretty intuitive for most people, but it's like don't try to force this one data cron to exactly what you want. Roll re-roll uh roll a bunch up to level different level gates like five, six, eight, and then it's like, okay, the one that's closest to what you really want, then you take that one to eight. Instead of starting with one and being like, okay, I really need this one to be this, this, and this, it's gonna be harder to make it work that way. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty difficult. Uh, the next character I kind of wanted just to have like a special mention for was uh, Omega, because um, I kind of feel like in threes, she's not going to have any use at all. Um, yeah. Just, just a fives character, basically. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about threes. She's pretty much useless in threes, so you're not going to miss out this season. But get her out for 5v5, though. Next up was the kind of the teams that have uh, lost their Datacrons, I suppose. Um, obviously, mm, they've yeah. lost their Amplified obviously we've lost all the ufu crons um which is mainly why i want to talk about tuscans i did it's going to have a bit of impact obviously for those of you that have an omicron on chieftain and raider and obviously django uh i don't know how much you like using django but he's kind of a meme on my channel that i didn't have very good relations with him at the beginning of my <laughs> when i started making galaxy heroes videos <laughs> um but i was yeah. using him a lot against uh, qui Gon Jin teams but first off i thought we'd just start off with Sir gender i definitely feel like uh, omicron is probably the best investment Real recent Grand Arena investment. Uh, I don't know if you would agree with that. Yeah, no, her Omicron is just insane. Like, it's so strong. Um, I am so scared of her. Uh, in my next, well, I don't know when you're going to have this video come out, but the last Grand Arena match of this season, I took a full gas. Again, it's coming out tomorrow from when we're recording this. Okay. Uh, but I took a full gas team against that Seer team, and I still almost like lost just because I, I was like barely getting turns. It run circles around me. She's just insane. Um, I finally got her to relic myself, and I'm just so glad. Yeah. Um, she has to go with ATF. I don't know if they're going to want set 9 or set 10, because you could either make Ahsoka Fulcron do ridiculous damage, or just make Seer even way harder to kill. Um, but either way, it's going to be kind of scary, still. I guess that kind of really depends on whether you plan on using... Because I know Seer is mainly a defense character. Obviously, if you wanted to yeah. use the the more offense Daycon, you could just bring her on offense, and obviously Ahsoka just will blitz a team most likely with her whirlwind. <laughs> well, well, I don't know. So like the offense stat, like the same thing with defense. I don't think the stat itself, like offense, high offense, means you need to take them on offense. Like high offense is great for a defensive placement because if like Ahsoka Fulcrum can just one shot anything, it's like if you let her get to that then you're going to lose. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think either way, it just depends what kind of emerges as the common counter. And if you're going to use her with a tank like Kylo Ren and Mask, you probably definitely want to use set 10 because you only have two light side characters and it's not even that much extra survivability yeah, true. Um, in 3v3. So yeah, it, if you're running Seer, Ahsoka, and Cal, uh, Ufu Cal, then I think you probably could do set 9. But it's, yeah. it, I don't know. We'll have to see. I, think, I kind of feel like that that third spot is kind of flex, whether you want to take a tank in like True or like you say with Cal. Yeah. Um, I'll just put Cal with Ray because I know you can put like JTR with Ray and you just have like a full Ufu. We used to be able to obviously with the 3v3. Yeah. Um, and obviously he's, he can stack his evasion up as well. It would be really annoying with all his dodge. <laughs> and he obviously mm -hmm. has that big Ufu bonus for Ray and Ben themselves. So guess it kind of really yeah. depends on what you have available to use and then you can just set um obviously the sit main two of seer and ahsoka and then you have that third option and uh, that'll kind of be a flex mm -hmm. spot depending on what you have yeah even like ninth sister will probably work in there because you have another tank and if you have reva or true um you're probably not gonna be using her with reva so. yeah yeah and you don't have enough inquisitors to make a or like a second inquisitor team in 3v3 isn't really yeah. Well, even then, you still so, have. I think you have seven Inquisitors now. If you have Reva, um, you, can you have, have seven. But it's like the second team. What's that going to be like? Five, nine, yeah, second sister, and <laughs> seventh or eighth. It's like, yeah, mm. <laughs> it's not intimidating. Yeah. I think this is the first threes I've actually had Reva. So this could be quite interesting this season. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think I got her a week or two after you did. You beat me to it. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I feel, yeah, it was so slow, man. Yeah, I don't know what you're going with average, like 30 I faced, uh, If you watch my next Grand Arena, like, I faced someone that's in Call Patrol, 
but they don't have Revo. There was like two people in Call Patrol without Revo. I guess they recently joined, and my opponent was in that guild and didn't have Revo. I was shocked. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They kind of just use the same Revo like in everyone's account, uh, especially within Carb One. If someone doesn't have Revo in Carb One, you're kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> now, at, the, at, the, yeah, at least at this like... point. <laughs> Yeah, it's like increasingly more rare. The fact that it was like the best skill in the game, I was like, "What?" Yeah, am I seeing this right? <laughs> Can I like rub your eyes and just make sure you're not seeing stuff? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so next, obviously, I want to talk about Mara. Obviously, Mara Jade has had her day quite expire. Um, so I kind of feel like even though we do have the staple team that we did have for the last three v three season with obviously Pal, Mara Jade, and Star Killer. I kind of feel like we might actually mm -hmm. see Starkiller move elsewhere with some like maybe Savage teams on defense. Um, obviously that would be him the lead with like Darth Vader. I feel like we might see a bit more variety with Starkiller um, with this set. I don't know whether. Um, I actually dis disagree, um, okay. but not like strongly. So like her Datacron, it was nice, but it basically translated to more damage. Like they gain her level nine gives crit chance and crit damage uh three percent crit chance crit damage stacking for one turn it's not too much and then uh inflicting with shock deals extra damage yeah so that's mainly that and then the level six um the wordy one is like about turn meter and reducing max health um and bulking you up so like whenever uh, ufu uses special ability and they have at least three buffs they can in game uh, five percent max health at least that's when i had i think you can suitably replace everything that that data did with just more damage like more arm penetration crit damage offense if you get like a pure damage data on set 10 i think it's suitable because yeah. with them you want to just be run circles around the other team like you don't really want the bulk so i'm still gonna use that same team all season against ray and yeah. i don't think it's gonna go down in value at all i, I definitely agree with you for, for like offense, so I think this is just like the staple team for offense. You always use Palpatine, Mara, mm -hmm. Starkiller, like, or, not, especially against Ray, like you say. Um, I think it's more of a yeah. case of whether you, if you say, for example, you necessarily don't have the tools to run or don't need to actually kill a Ray or anything like that, you could possibly set like a Starkiller team on defense with the set nine Datacron, um, with obviously some more like Savage and stuff. If yeah. you really want to try that out, it, I guess it's just without the Mara Jade Cron, obviously, you were kind of. With Mara, I suppose with Mara Jade, you were kind of stuck using Mara Jade Starkiller teams all the time um, previously. Whereas now it's kind of freed up a little bit to try things out. Yeah, yeah, you could. Yeah, she could. Uh, she could make things work with just Palpatine, and then Starkiller could figure something else out. I, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but I'm just, I'm way too attached to that lineup, <laughs> and I never said that on defense. But uh, I think yeah, on defense that would be pretty scary. You need something pretty pretty good to take that out with a set nine on them for sure i'm, I'm always i love using stark here on offense she's just so fun to use i always use him on offense so i don't really oh, tend to put him on defense <laughs> yeah but talking of which obviously ray um is going to be changing up a little bit obviously he, she kind of changed up a little bit anyway with set nine um mm -hmm. i feel like more people were saying her with that set could just to make her really healthy and tanky and annoying to kill even though stark didn't really have any problems but um yeah. Obviously, we've lost the Ben Cron. Um, not that I ever took, as you can see, took Ben to Relic 7 to that use that anyway. anyway. Yeah. Because most of the time, he'd just be stunned or shocked. He wouldn't even get his turn, and it'd be like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it would be like actively hurtful in some situations. Like, it would just, like, if you went straight from above 100% health on him to below 50%, if he was like, like, if he was stunned or something, he'd get the 100% turn meter. And he wouldn't do anything, and then he'd just be out of damage immunity. So it could actually hurt him. Uh, that one I called from the beginning. I think that one sucked. That was yeah. useless. <laughs> I'm kind of glad I never took my Ben for Relic 7 for that, because um don't know about you. You've oh, yeah, been saying. You got, yeah, you got five as well. I've had mine at five forever, and it's just been like, eh. <laughs> I, actually, I actually used Ray quite a lot on uh, offense in the 5v5 season just gone, because I was using her to nice. kill Reva when she popped up. Because right. I like setting Trey on Savage on defense because I just feel like it's a really good defense team to draw out a GL. Same here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's better on defense than Ray. Because, like, Ray, there's a cheap counter, and then for that, there's none. So. Yeah, you can get some, like, agree with you. Um, obviously, some really annoying Ray comps, but they, they just tend to pull from, like, so many 
uh, teams, it kind of feels a bit useless at times. Yeah, like when they put Zori, it's like that Zori could be her own for like her own team and a force to be reckoned with. And then if you put her with Ray, you destroy half her kit. And yeah, it makes it harder. But I still never lost against a Ray, even had Zori. Like people put her with Zori and Sorty, and then just remove two possible teams that could have used that I I still use on defense. Most um, most of them all so yeah, die I, to. I a, think Ray needs to go offense. Yeah, mo mo most of them all die to a um. Stark in a basic anyway. <laughs> just AoE, exactly. just everyone dies. <laughs> right, yeah. But yeah, I, think, kind of, I kind of feel like that threes team is obviously, it's always Ray and Ben, and then that third slot is kind of flex. I've put Cal in there, but obviously right. come back to the Seer team, depending on what you set there. Uh, obviously, JTR is a big, uh, well, I guess she's probably still viable here because of uh, her dodge increase and things. So uh, you do have options for yeah. the third spot with Ray, which is quite nice. Yeah. Yeah, so I suppose we can talk about Django next. We'll go Django next. Um, Django, I actually really enjoyed using Django's Datacron. Um, uh -huh. Because I I had the 100% more damage on the level 6. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that one. Um, yeah, that, that one's really good. I was thinking the level 9, but yeah, that level 6 is crazy with him. Now, the, the, his character bonus is what... I, I don't think it was actually that great. I think it was the... Was it the 20% it chance for 50% defense pen or something? Yeah. I can't remember what was that one. Um, yeah, it was it was pointless. But yeah, that hundred percent extra damage with two turns damage immunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially with uh, it's always like using this against Quagra Jin teams. This is normally what I tend to use Newt mm -hmm. and Django with, because uh, obviously B one would have got that bonus as well, because he's always at one health. Um, so he got the hundred percent yeah bonus as well. So I kind of feel yeah, like Django's like combo for them. probably going to kind of fall out of favor maybe a little bit. But obviously with the new Datacron set, he could come back in as still. A Qui-Gon Jinn killer, <laughs> as I like to use him for. Yeah, I mean, I think so. I mean, I think people are going to use uh, just more armor penetration on their own Qui-Gon Jinn. Um, so it's not going to help. They're not going to like be able to survive a Django with a bunch of armor pen and crit damage and all that stuff. So I think he'll still be able to do the job. And this is like, I mean, this team is specifically just for Qui-Gon Jinn teams, basically. I don't... I. I mean, in the lower, like, Kyber 2 or 3 or something, I guess this could be a good defensive team still. Um, well, Mothma just blitzes yeah, he, it. He can... <laughs> what blitz is it? Uh, Mon Mothma. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, Mon but, Mothma yeah, and uh, Kyle. will help make up the difference. It's, not, it's mainly an offense team. Uh, you, you obviously don't seem to use mm -hmm. new uh, Django a lot, do you? I use, use it quite a lot. Um um, I don't, but I, I have. I think last season I I even used it a couple times. Um, maybe just once. I think it was once or twice I did use it. I mean, last year I think I ended up using that a couple of times, but I don't see Qui-Gon too much on defense yeah, anymore. Um, but yeah, I mean, Django, Django is such a hoss. I, I just, I like how he's like one of those characters I can rely on to do just big damage in one hit. So like if... If I have nest, there's a solo nest left over or something. I can count on him to get it done. Uh, so I like having him as an option on offense. I don't really in threes. It's like I, there's not much else to do with him really. Yeah, it's kind of like clean up, I suppose, in, in threes at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> or you could do boss, Boba, and Django, and take on a Night Sister team, and then you have two ways to prevent revives there. Yeah, it's true. Pretty nice. Yeah, I suppose we'll. More likely to see Night nice Sisters on defense now with obviously Merrin. Um, mm -hmm. so you could potentially see. I don't know what the threes team for Merrin is. I guess it's like Talzin, Merrin, and. We've seen Darker and Zombie are kept oh, out. Talzin, Asajj, and Merrin, maybe? I don't know. Um, oh, but also Bobo, Django, and. Or Bosk, Boba, and Django. They, they're they good against the uh, Tusken Raider Omicron, too. That's. Oh, uh, yeah. Else. Yeah, that's true. There's no revives. Yeah. Yeah, they, 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 I think it's kind of one of like it's kind of a sleeper team. It's kind of one of the ones that are mainly forgotten about. Um, yeah, not people. Not many people just um, think like I need to use like I could use Newt B one and Django here um, in threes. <laughs> let me let me say you're. It's kind of funny how similar your account is to mine. Like when you were looking at Night Sisters, it's exactly the same lineup I have. I have Daka at six, Talzin at three, Asajj at three, Zombie at five. Spears is at three though. You have her at four, and I have one Zeta on Marin. So it's funny. You have like the exact same setup. 
yeah well we can't we can't apply that second zeta until we got our gear 12 can we because obviously that right um, yeah you that can. ability's locked i think it, mm -hmm. it has a zeta on it doesn't kinda it kind of weird mm -hmm. yeah it does yeah now i suppose obviously the last main uh team to talk about would be uh tuskers which seem to have quite a big effect in mm -hmm. like threes with both uh we have two teams basically you can have a chieftain i know people have been setting chieftain warrior and raider just to get just kind of negate I that i think that's better yeah you negate that uh, chieftain omicron but obviously if you i suppose uh chieftain army is kind of more offense based um because you just take boba and boba just does massive damage with his momentum stacks i kind of feel like yeah. it's gonna be more defense orientated this season uh with the set nine yeah set i don't know how much they're gonna fall off but they're definitely gonna fall off a lot um i do like raider the most for defense i think you can only make one at like kyber one you can only make one viable tuscan team i don't think you can split it into two like if you're using yeah you either use both at sign of Django or tuscan raider and then the rest like shaman and Ur, 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 they're gonna sit the bench yeah of course yeah i think it's um because i'll say that i know you've relic you relic your tuscans up quite a bit didn't you i think they were relic five minimum aren't they yeah they're they're all five and then warrior seven uh because you had um, yeah warrior so a couple good seasons yeah a couple good seasons with that that data cron yeah i suppose that is kind of more or less the teams that i want to talk about. i don't really have any teams in mind that you thought um might be quite good that you maybe wanted to briefly talk about or something or um i think we already talked about it on the on camera the just qui-gon with the wookies like i think that one's yeah. gonna be or not qui-gon cls just with like chewy and 3po and chewy they're gonna be really nice um and then for i don't know if it'll be better or anything but it's worth worth talking about so chris santon with java obviously set nine is going to be better with java as long as it's out um yeah. but then set 10 it might seem like it's going to be a great replacement because Chrysanthemum is going to get either a bunch of defense from the one or he's going to take less damage when he's over 50% uh, turn meter. Yeah. But I don't think it comes anywhere close to set nine because um, at least the ones, the job is I face, a lot of them have like over 200 some percent defense anyway. So the max from that level six with the stacking uh, defense on Wookiees it's like when an ally is critically hit, they gain foresight and 10% defense till the end of the battle. Uh, the foresight might be annoying, but that defense, it's like you need 20 crits on allies until it gets to the point where you are at with the set nine stats. Yeah. So I don't think it's enough to be excited about. Uh, although at my first glance, I was thinking like, it's going to be kind of scary to go against Java, but I think the normal stuff that worked against set nine is just going to have an even easier time. Because yeah, I think it's gone. I think you're like me in that you you just get rid of Chrysanthemum. If you take, say, for example, if you take JMK um, with Cat, you just get rid of Chrysanthemum first, just because I was kind of like, I always try to explain to people, it's kind of like you have, uh, you always look at Chrysanthemum as someone with 100% health and 100% protection, but realistically he has 200% health and 200% protection. So effectively, right. whilst it's... he getting rid of him straight away, you don't have to kill him properly once, <laughs> if that makes any sense. <laughs> right. Yeah, like if, when you have to do it twice and you don't have like an insane team it's just such a pain like it's one thing um I, i've been loving using lord vader against java because i just try to wait until he's an alt to kill him so he can't be revived but if you have to get through Kersan twice like the normal way it's just i don't know it's just painful yeah you're always risking that especially in threes if you leave chrysanta alive for long enough jabba will get ultimate and obviously it can mm -hmm. take a while with threes getting to ultimate anyway but just by right. getting rid of uh, Chrysanthemum first and then just going straight after Boosh. Uh, normally eliminates mm -hmm. that issue of actually Jabra over again to Ultimate makes things a lot easier and Banner's a lot better. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and this 3v3, I think I'm going to do the exact same thing. JMK against Java. That's just his lot in life. And I have to figure everything else out. Um, it's kind of staple uh, already, isn't I it? I could do Lord Vader, I guess. But so I think we can talk about jedi real quick because the the one level six i think it's gonna be super impactful so foresight is pretty common on jedi uh obviously you got yoda giving it out to everybody yoda gives himself foresight a lot but uh gk gives out foresight on his basic 
Mm -hmm. Revan gets foresight when he swaps turn meter. Um, JMK gives out foresight to everyone. So it's going to be very common, and you could get to max 100% extra damage. And unlike in set 8, where you had to have like 100% health or protection, like Ufus, you could get to a point with a Jedi team where you're doing plus 100% damage for like the whole battle. Yeah, true. After you've ramped up enough. So that's going to be a pretty scary in a variety of Jedi teams. And I'm kind of excited to see how that works out. So I think it's uh, like you mentioned with the with the stacking uh, damage, you're probably going to be using that mainly yeah. on JMK probably against Jabra and stuff like that, I imagine, um, just to make sure you right. can get through. Yeah, for JMK, it's like a little less impactful because Cat doesn't benefit from it. It's just yeah. like JMK and the others and like Padme won't get it. Um, but like JMK will stack his damage a lot. I suppose if you're um, if you're taking both jmk and uh gk with cat that's a lot of foresight very quickly so you could be doing a lot of damage mm -hmm. you might be able to kill boosh a lot quicker um which would be quite nice yeah 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 and like... it'll be more scary if you come across uh that team on defense too yeah i never really thought about them actually having a lot of uh foresight in the actual jedi faction i thought it was Every, when I saw mm. it, I was just like, oh, it's just Qui-Gon Jinn. <laughs> probably like a lot oh, yeah, of people yeah. did. Yeah, Qui-Gon Jinn is another one, yeah. So, I mean, that's going to be probably the most popular one, I think. Um, the damage reduction one is going to be kind of scary, too, in the right circumstances. Um, yeah. But that offense, extra offense, and or it's not even offense, deal 20% more damage. That's going to stack so well with arm penetration, crit damage, and offense as well. So there's going to be like a triple stack of just tons of extra damage. It's going to be crazy. Yeah, it's going to be pretty nuts. I suppose the only, the only thing I would probably mention right now is that obviously, <clears throat> even though like we do only have two active sets of Datacrons uh, at one time, even though the meta at the moment is currently mainly just de defeating the defense Datacrons that we have from the set nine, um, we obviously have to mm -hmm. try and... I know we, there's, there's never uh, possible to predict what's going to happen with the next season of Datacons. But it's like, yeah. I think it's actually worthwhile if you can to afford to just keep ramping up, um, not ramping up, keep um, stocking up on your maps so yeah, that when things change, uh, you can yeah. then adapt your Datacon set to obviously fit with the new one and then you'll hopefully keep up with the meta that way, I suppose is one thing I wanted to add on there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, you never know how good the next set's going to be, but you still want to keep your inventory uh stocked up because it'll just make the next set so much easier and it's kind of like a rolling uh, like a snowball it just keeps building on itself um and especially now it's going to be really easy to build up a stash so if people are hesitant to engage with datacrons a lot i think this is the a good set to start doing it because it's a lower relic gate and then just way easier to accrue them and then you'll set yourself up for the future really well yeah it's def i definitely feel like it's uh worthwhile doing but I think we'll probably just leave it there, I reckon. Um, obviously, we've mainly yeah. covered a lot of the teams that we want to talk about for that's going to be changing for this next 3v3 season. Uh, obviously, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Song Jutta, for coming out. Obviously, I'll leave a link to your channel probably in the title so everyone can go check you out. Obviously, make sure to leave likes, comments, and so go and subscribe over there. And uh, yeah, hope you've uh, it's been quite fun. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much, man. I appreciate you having me on uh, and taking care of all the technical side of stuff but yeah good talk nice to talk this over with you yeah um so thank you very much for watching everyone and i shall catch you in the next one